when graphing, first maybe look at the lead coefficient here, which is negative. So that negative lead coefficient means it's going to drop on the right. Now why is it going up on the left? Well, it's a fifth degree. How do I know it's fifth degree? Because there's an x here, okay? There is an x, but squared, so that would be 1 plus 2, and then another x squared, so that would be 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fifth degree, if you were to FOIL that out, you have x to the fifth somehow in it as a highest power. Next, to get the zeros, well, you set this equal to 0 and solve it right here. You got 3 over 2, which is 1.5. All right, what makes this 0 is negative 2, and what makes this 0 is 4. Now these squareds are telling you what to do. So watch what happens. First of all, I put those three zeros here in blue. Then what I do is I look at the end behavior. Again, because it was odd, I was going opposite. And so I know it's going to go down here and up over here. And then what I do is I go, okay, at 4, if I look up here, the 4 came from a square, so I know that's going to bounce. And I know the negative 2 has a square, so it's also going to bounce off. So what I do when they come up, I hit that, turn around. And on the other side, as I come down, I know it's going to bounce off this one, so I turn around. And then if I look right here, the, the 3 over 2, which is a 1.5, is going to then go through. Make sure it's all rounded, no jagged edges. If f of x is a fourth degree polynomial with relative mins at negative 4, negative 2, which is right there, and 3, negative 4, which is right there, and relative max at 0, 5, so 0, 5 is right there. Sketch f of x and then describe its in behavior. Name the zeros it could have and the possible lead coefficient. So, if this is a max, we know it's going to go like this. If this is a min, we know it's going to go like a, a valley. And another min over here, you know it's going to be a valley. With a fourth degree, the only way you can connect it is if you go down like this and back and forth. There's no other way you can do that if it's a fourth degree because a fourth degree is even, so both sides have to go the same direction. All right, the number of maxes and mins add up to three, which the degree is always one more than that, which would be a four or a six or something like that, but the 4 hits right there, so we know it could be a 4th degree because of that. All right, so really pay attention to maxes have a little hill look, mins have a little valley look, and something like this is the only thing possible. So if this is the only thing possible, your end behavior has to be up on both sides. The only other option would be going down on both sides, which wouldn't make sense because you could not hit these dots as maxes and mins stated and go down on both sides. Now, how many zeros do there have to be? There has to be four. One, two, three, four. There's no other way for a polynomial like this to not have four zeros. Because of where these maxes and mins sit, you cannot make any other one that would make that happen. All right. Lastly, it's a positive lead coefficient because on the right, it's going up. So when it's on the right going up, it's always a positive lead coefficient. All right, with this function right here, we're going to ask four different questions. The first one is, what's f of 1? Well, the first thing you could do is just plug in 1 for all x's and crunch it. Or you can use synthetic with that 1. And you take the coefficients 2, negative 4, negative 6, and 0. A lot of people forget the 0 here because you have to have a placeholder for every term all the way down to a number. And the number is missing, so it's 0. All right, and then you do synthetic. The remainder here is the answer. All right, does f of x divide by x plus 2 have a remainder of 6? So if you divide by x plus 2, well, you're checking negative 2 as a 0. So you check negative 2 as a 0, and the answer is your remainder. Okay, so if I try to find negative 2, because it's what makes this 0, do synthetic with these numbers again. My reading is negative 20, which is not 6, so no, it is not true for what it's saying. Is 3 a 0 of f of x? So for checking if 3 is a 0, you simply use 3 in synthetic, and if it comes out to be 0, it is a 0. 
You could have also plugged 3 into all these if you want to. So yes, it's a 0. Lastly, is x plus 1 a factor? Well, if we're checking a factor, kind of like this one, you have to check it's 0. So you do synthetic with negative 1, which makes this 0. And when you come up with 0, and if it's 0, that means there's no remainder, so it means it is a factor. So yes, for something to be a factor, you have no remainder. For something to be a 0, you have a 0 value out, or 0 remainder. It's kind of like 3, 0 as a coordinate. So, for this piecewise equation, negative 3 is this red graph, and it lives, x is less than negative 4. This graph is left of negative 4, or less than negative 4. 3 is this green graph, and it is between negative 4 here and 0. That's why x is between negative 4 and 0. The reason for the less than or equal to's is because it's closed circles on the edges, so we include them. Now, where this statement comes from for the in-between is, if you look at this part, it's saying x is less than or equal to 0, which the green part is less than or equal to 0. And this part right here says if you read it backwards, x is greater than or equal to negative 4, which if you look at this green line, it is bigger than and equal to negative 4. So get used to this statement. In-betweens always have an x in the middle and less than signs. If they're closed dots, it's or equal to. And lastly, this blue graph right here is a graph of 2, and it's right of 0, or greater than 0, and it's open circle. So that would be just a greater than. So to prove a polynomial identity is true, well, we want to look at either side of this and change it to look like the other. Now, this would be very hard to change to look like that because you have to use factoring. So I'm going to change this big mess. So what I decided to do first is multiply this using FOIL. That's what I got right there. These canceled, leaving me this. So this right here comes from this. This created this piece right here. All right, so this gives me this, and I just move this down. I multiply this. This time I use the box, and when I do that, the middles cancel, and what I end up with is x to the fourth minus a to the fourth, which is right here. And over here, you keep that the whole time. Don't ever change that. Just leave it over here. So what we just proved is I left this, and with proper mathematical operations, I showed that all of this equals this, which means we proved it. Both sides are completely equal, and I did not use any illegal mathematical operations.